What's up everyone, it's Andrew here from Offshore Audio bringing you tips and tricks to make you a better live sound engineer and get you better sound at live events. During the pandemic, there wasn't a lot of work for a lot of sound engineers. Those of us that did have work had to transition a bit and that transition involved moving more towards video conferences, streaming conferences. One major curveball that was thrown at all of us, I think, was this video conference environment where we used something like Zoom to bring speakers in from their homes or from other places to take part in a conference digitally. Things have wound down a little with the pandemic and things are a little more normal again, but this video element still remains. A lot of people still choose to just take part in conferences over a video stream. That means that we as sound engineers really need to know how to deal with video conferencing with people calling in over Zoom or Teams or whatever. In this video, I'm going to share with you everything I know about getting the most out of a video conference. We're going to take a look at what kind of situations you'll find involving video conferencing, who, how many, that sort of thing. I'll take you through a tutorial on the mixer showing you exactly how to route your buses and everything to make sure that your video conferencing goes smoothly. And then we'll talk in the end a little bit about other information that you need to know to make this all run smoothly. I'm probably going to talk a lot about Zoom because that was the most common one that I ran into. It sort of became ubiquitous, synonymous with video conferencing now, but these principles apply to Teams or Google Meets or whatever other video conferencing program you're using. Without further ado, let's dive in. So you've got a few different sort of levels of video conferencing that you'll run into. The most simple one is someone will call in to hold a presentation. They'll appear on the screen and talk to a bunch of delegates, give a presentation and then leave. So that's sort of fairly straightforward. You kind of level that up a little bit if you introduce things like audience participation, if you want the audience to be able to ask them questions, or if you have a conference host who is going to talk a little bit with them, interview them slightly more, that becomes a little more complicated. And then you sort of go all the way up to a full video conference, having multiple speakers both on screen calling in over video and also participants on the stage and you want them all to be able to talk together, which is a bit of a nightmare, but it happens. So you're faced with a few key problems that you need to address. The first one is that you need to get the sound out of this video conversation and into the room. That's usually fairly straightforward. Your second problem is that you need to get the sound from the room back to the video callers. You need to make sure that they hear the microphones that are live in the room. And when you do this, you need to make sure that they don't hear themselves because then this forward and back through your mixer is going to create an echo for them, which is going to put them off, make it really unpleasant. We also need to minimize any spill from the PA speakers into any microphones because again, that'll create that echo. To do this, we need to create a monitor mix basically and send them everything except from themselves. Sounds easy if you've done it a lot. Another really important step in this whole process is testing everything. It's so important to get someone to call in beforehand to make sure that you have a stable connection, you have sound from them nice and clear, and you have sound back to them clear with no echoes and no feedback. So that's the kind of broad outline of your problems, but let's have a look at the mixer and see how we solve those problems. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do is we need to connect our Zoom laptop, the one that we're using to talk to the participants, we need to connect that to the mixer so that we can bring it out in the PA. And we're going to do that using a mini jack cable. Now that we've connected that, you can see that I've got signal coming in here on this channel, which I've labeled mini jack. And I'm just going to navigate away from this layer now because I have a DCA set up to control that fader. So we know that the laptop is connected to the mixer and passing sound. The next step is to check that Zoom itself, the app, is passing the sound out of the correct output. Remember, I can just look at this DCA to see my input levels. So I'm going to open up my Zoom meeting here and you can see I've got the controls down the bottom left. Now I'm using Zoom, but whatever program you're using, there will be a way to change your audio input and output and you need to find that and change that. So I'm going to open this up and select the speaker, that's the output, as this headset, which is what my laptop calls the headphone output. I'm then going to click down here again, and I'm going to select test the sound output. And I can see that the meters are moving on zoom. And I can also see here on my mixer on the DCA channel, 
that I have input. So I know that that's working. I've got the sound into the mixer and it can come out the PA. Now onto the more complicated stuff. We need to get this sound back into Zoom. We need to create a monitor mix for the speakers on the Zoom conversation so that they can hear everyone else on the stage, but not themselves. So I'm going to select a mix over here. You'll see that I already have one set up. So I'm just going to turn that up and unmute that channel. Then with that mix selected, I'm going to press the send zone fader button to send the microphones that I want to that Zoom conversation. Now, what is it that I want to send to them? I want to send them all the microphones that I'm using on the stage. And you'll see here, maybe you can't read it, but these are just labeled microphone one to eight. I'm going to send these into that Zoom mix. I could also think about sending playback if I had some sort of other laptop or device playing back audio, but I'm gonna leave that down for now. What I absolutely will not send is I will not send this mini jack input, which is the sound from Zoom. That must stay off because if that is up, that will create the echo and the feedback that we don't want. So we're sending all of the microphones to this Zoom bus here, right? I've got this wireless microphone here that I'm going to use to test it. You can see that if I speak into it, there is sound coming in on this channel. So I'm going to unmute that channel and I'm going to change the settings so that it is sent to the Zoom bus on a pre-fader send. If you're a little confused about pre and post fader sends, I'll leave a link down below to some videos that you can check out to learn more about that. So you'll see that my channel is unmuted, my fader is down, and when I speak into this microphone, you can see that it comes in on the input channel and there is also coming in on the bus that we are sending to Zoom. Because we have it on a pre-fader send, I can keep this fader down, but use headphones and this microphone to have a discrete conversation with those people on Zoom. I just need to have the pre-fader listen button pushed in on the Zoom input channel and I will be able to hear what they say. And because my send is pre-fader to their monitor bus, they will hear what I say. This is when you need to pay really good attention to your gain structure. If you're in the habit of turning your fader up to zero and then adjusting the gain until it sounds nice, it's time to stop. Because if you do that and you have a really high powered PA, you'll end up under gaining your microphone and then you won't have enough juice in the system to send on to your Zoom conversation. Because remember, they don't have a high power PA. They've got little laptop speakers. So here, every decibel counts. We need to get the most out of our signal on that bus. So if you look here, you'll see that I have a reasonable gain on this microphone. Usually that's fine in this room. But if we take a look at the output bus on this Zoom, you'll see that I'm peaking around minus 21 decibels. That's a whole load of range left that these people aren't getting. I'm going to nudge the gain up a little bit and be a little less conservative so that I can get a little more into my bus for those Zoom listeners. I can always bring down my master fader or bring down my channel fader because my send is set to pre-fader so that will not affect what the Zoom participants are hearing. You should also consider using a little bit of compression on this Zoom bus because that way you can kind of squeeze the most out of the range that you have. Vocals are naturally very dynamic and different speakers have different sort of ranges. But by using compression, we can really get that dynamic range squeezed down a bit so that we are hanging out at the top of this meter a little more consistently. You can see that I've got a little bit of compression going on here. And now my meter is sitting a little more comfortably, a little higher up there. Now to get this mix out of the mixer and into the Zoom conversation, we're going to need a sound card. I've got a Focusrite Scarlett here. This is one of the most commonly forgotten about parts of this process. If you're working with smaller productions, quite often they don't think about how the person on Zoom is going to hear the speakers on the stage. You need to know that so that you can advise them properly on this. So we're taking the mix out on an XLR. I have an XLR to jack cable and then connecting it to the line input on my sound interface. And then I'm connecting my interface to my laptop with the USB cable. I've routed this mix to come out of output six, but if you're less sure about routing, again, I'll leave links down below so that you can learn a little more about that. So we're going to navigate back to Zoom. We're gonna click on the arrow next to the microphone icon, and we're going to go with select microphone. And under here, we're going to select our Focusrite Scarlett solo which appears here. If it doesn't appear here, then check your connections and check your drivers. We can then select test speaker and microphone. 
and you'll see a little window pops up to play a sound and then a little window pops up after that to test your microphone input. I'm speaking into my microphone and you can see that it's going through the mixer and into Zoom, no problem. So I know everything's working. You could of course also use the USB connection on the back of the mixer to interface with Zoom or you could use Dante if your mixer has Dante and you have Dante virtual sound card installed. I'll leave links to videos down below explaining how you would do that. But now we can hear everyone on Zoom and everyone in Zoom can hear us. In addition to setting up the mixer and running the sound correctly, there are a few other problems that you really need to think about. I've said before that just because something is not sound does not mean that it's not your problem. If we're freelancers, which most of us are, I believe, our reputation is our next paycheck. If the show goes badly, it doesn't matter if you did a stellar job as the sound person. If the customer was not satisfied with the show, you might not get the call back. It's our job to make sure that everything goes well within our power. Now with professional conferencing setups, you're going to have an AV team or video people that you basically send your sound to. And as long as you're sending the sound correctly, as we just discussed, then you don't have a problem. But on smaller conferences or smaller events, you might find that the event organizers haven't thought of everything and that you have a better oversight of how everything should be connected together than they do. The first thing that is forgotten is the camera. I worked one of these events just a few weeks ago where someone had not thought that the speaker would need to see the people they're speaking to. And it's really, really lame if someone calls in from another country, another continent even, or from their home, and they just are met with a black screen with their own presentation, and they're just lecturing to the wall in their office. It's nice to be able to include them and show them some of the audience. So if you identify that no one is arranging a camera, no one's thought about it, it's worth just saying to the event organizers, have you thought about how the person on Zoom will see the audience? Another thing that indirectly is our responsibility is communication with these people on Zoom. They're in the dark. They need to hear the correct things. That is directly our job. But also we need to communicate with them and say, hi there, this is the sound engineer in the venue. Just to let you know that you're gonna be on stage in 10 minutes or so. Just keep them in the loop. You don't personally have to do this, but maybe prepare a microphone and say to the producer, hey, could you just talk to them for two minutes and just let them know what's going on, where we are in the schedule. If there's a delay, you need to communicate that to them and explain to them exactly what they're going to hear before they take to the stage, the virtual stage. Say, you're going to hear the host say, thank you, Michelle, for a lovely talk. Next up, we have an amazing talk about sustainability by your name, welcome to the stage person, and that's their cue. What did we cover in this video then? Identified the main sort of Zoom video conferencing situations you've run into. Speaker on the stage, speaker with interaction, multiple speakers with interaction. We went through a tutorial of how to set up the mixer to accommodate these situations. That is testing getting our sound in, creating a sort of monitor mix for the Zoom participants where they hear what is happening in the room, but do not hear themselves. And we finally covered ancillary problems that are not directly our responsibility, but can affect our reputation, such as, is there a camera? Are the people on Zoom being communicated with well? I'll leave links in the description down below to the videos and other tutorials that I've mentioned throughout this. You can check them out, they're free. I recommend you check these links out if you're not feeling super comfortable with the routing or any other aspect of operating the mixer. Have you worked video conferences? Do you use a different video platform than Zoom? Do you use Teams or Google Meets? Is there another one I don't even know about? Let me know. Leave me a comment down below. I hope this one was helpful for you, but for now, I'll just say thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.